Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to be talking with Cass Elliott in the afterlife from the famed group, The Mamas and the Papas. Now, the reason why I'm having a channeling session with Cass Elliott is because she came up in the channeling session I did with Janice Joplin. Isn't that interesting? She brought her up like twice. So I thought, okay, let's have a talk with Mama Cass, Cass Elliot. So here's what I know about Cass Elliot. I know that she died in the early 70s. I know that she was a singer and she's part of the Mamas and the Papas band. And I know that she died of heart, heart failure. I feel like she died of like diabetes contributed and like her health was just not very good. I can feel like it. She feels very, very heavy. And I think that that's probably common knowledge, but I know that she actually died of heart failure. So I feel like it is related in somewhat to obesity. I have to be honest about that and really upfront that I feel like that's how it was. Now, I don't know for sure. I just know that it was heart failure. Okay, so let's have a conversation with Cass Elliott. No idea how this is gonna go because I don't know a lot about you. So come on in, <laughs> let's have a conversation. She's like, yeah. She has like John Lennon glasses on. She's like, yeah. She's like, hey, hey, nice to meet you. And she sits down. Okay, she's got like kind of ripped long bell bottom type pants on and a really long caftan thing. And, and they look like cords, by the way, if anybody's interested in that. You know I'm very clairvoyant, so I described to you what, they, what they're wearing. Um, kind of like a beige or tan colored, kind of cord caramel colored corduroys, and then it's this caftan, long caftan. So hey, and then she's like playing the tambourine and she's singing. I can't think of any of your songs either. I can't hear, you know what? I have, and I have my computer here. Should I, maybe I should look something up and listen to it and then have a conversation with you. Maybe I should do that. You know, I'm gonna do that, you guys, just a second. Let me get my try something different in this interview. How about that? Cass Elliot. Let's do YouTube. Song. Let's see. Okay, so Dream a Little Dream for Me is the first one that comes up. So I'm going to listen to that a little bit. Wow, that's not at all what I expected to hear. Dream a little dream. Okay, so that's not at all what I expected to hear from you because you feel way more like a folk artist to me than what this is vibe is giving me. So there, I'm sure there's a lot more music than just this on there, but it's, yeah, very different. Okay, okay, so I can see here too from the image of you that there is a lot of struggle with weight and that I, and I feel like, like there's diabetes and obesity definitely contributed to your death. Is that accurate? She said, yes, yes. So you don't have to apologize for that. She said, yes, you know, tell it like it is. She said, tell the truth. She said, I was known for telling the truth. I was known for telling it like it was. So I don't sugarcoat things around me. You don't have to do that, Bridget. You don't have to do that at all. All right, so what do you want to be known for? Let's start there. What do you want to be known for as your legacy? She says the, arti the artistry, the musical talent, the creativity. Yeah, the pure raw talent, she says, the artistry, you know, the pure raw talent. You know, she says, and then she's showing like nowadays artists have so many enhancements and things that they can do and so many things at their aid to change the sound of their voice or to enhance the background and all that. And she said, we didn't do it like that. We did not do it like that. You show up and you, it's you and the instruments and it's your voice. Your voice is your instrument. It's, the, it's what you have to communicate, whatever message you're trying to communicate. And she's like, that's, that's like where the power is. That's where the power is in that voice. She said, she must have been known for her voice. Did you write music too? Yes. And then she's showing me sunshine something, something sunshine know what that is exactly and she's talking to me about having a, <laughs> she's talking to me about okay I don't know that's gonna sound a little cliche but a little bit of a crush on Paul McCartney 
So, <laughs> and I'm feeling an attachment or a connection to London or England. So I'm not sure if she was actually here as an American in the United States or if she's from England, but I see that and then see her kind of admitting that she may be a little crush on Paul McCartney, not even John Lennon, but like Paul McCartney, <laughs> you know? Which he was like more of kind of a pop star, like if I was kind of compare it to nowadays, and John Lennon was much more of like the hippie, the cool, and nowadays would be like, not alternative, but kind of, you know, like that. She said, yeah, it's not what you think, is it? It's not what you think. And then she sang something about Indiana, small town Indiana. I think it's Indiana. And then she's saying, um, like, this feeling of, like, my brother died. My brother died? When my brother died? Something about when my brother died. She's talking about somebody that was really lost and confused, a uh, man, um, and having, um, like, really a lot of struggle with addiction, but the addiction is trying to like quiet his mind he's trying to quiet his mind because there's too many voices in his head or too much chaos in his head and he's just trying to quiet his mind it's not anxiety because it's not in the heart but it's in his mind and I don't know if he actually had multiple multiple personality disorder or if he had depression or if he had some he's saying my brother my brother and after my brother died he said it was um it's such a sad time it's such a sad time I don't I don't know how my family was able to cope with that. With our, It feels like the deaths were close, kind of close. Maybe her and her brother died around the same time or it was an anniversary of someone's death or brother. I feel like a brother, something brother. Now this might be a scenario where she's bringing in somebody else too that I need to channel in the next video. I don't know, they're kind of doing that to each other now. It's like, hey, handing the baton off to the next person. But So you were really known for your voice, it sounds like. When I ask what legacy, you say your raw talent, the raw talent, the artistry, the creative part of you, the being a creative and sharing your gifts, right? I'm going to use those words. You're not using the word gifts, but I'm going to use that. And she says, you know, I was really criticized. I was not taken seriously for a really long time. Had I been a solo artist, I wouldn't have had as much um, success as I did in the band. I, there's just no way I would have had that kind of success. And then she's showing me kind of jazzy blues, too. Um, yeah, a little bit of a jazzy kind of blues vibe about her. And I like that. That's kind of cool. So did you guys do like Woodstock and that? Oh, yeah. She said, oh, yeah. All the festivals. She's like, that's what everybody did. It was, that was the thing to do. It wasn't like the big arenas or stadiums or it's not like how it is now. You know, it's not like a big concert tour stuff. It's different. It's it was different then, you know? So were you involved in like the protests and things like that? Would you consider yourself like a hippie or part of the peace movement? Oh, definitely part of the peace movement. Yeah, I was probably, I, yeah, definitely. I guess you could say that I, I embodied the principles, but I was so busy in my own. She says, you know, I had a lot of anger inside of me. And I think part of it is, was frustration for the way I was treated. You know, I wasn't one of those skinny little supermodels, skinny supermodels that you put a guitar with or put a microphone in front of and, and they can just look, look pretty and, and sing. I was the person that sang, that had the voice, but my body didn't match the voice. And because of that, I was, I was, I mean, I was really treated different. I really, really, I was. I mean, there's no, you can't deny that. And so there's a part of me that maybe seemed aggressive because of that, but I had to fight. I had to fight for, I had to fight for what was fair for me. I had to fight. Because I know, I know what my value is. I know what I bring. I know what this voice is worth, she says. So if I seemed, if I came off like, aggressive and and um, mean-spirited to people it's because I had I had to stand up for myself and that wears you down it wears you down so I did and I, and I would say and I will admit that I battled with depression I will admit that and that I and that food was part of my way to cope so did you also use like drugs and or alcohol or have other kind of substance abuse kinds of things or, or things, addictions. Oh yeah. 
Oh yeah. She said everybody did multiple kinds of drugs, recreational drugs, sure, all the time, all the time. But I had problems like sleeping and regulating my, it's almost like regulating my blood pressure or body temperature, I don't know which one, something that's like going up and down. And so she had medication, it looks like. And when you mix that with things, it doesn't work so well, you know, or it could work real well, it depends on what you're trying to do. And she said, it's nice to just escape. You know, it was nice to just escape for a while, but you know, you can only be high for so long and then it's just not. And then I feel like she feels like she got straight or she tried to be healthy, get healthy and not use any kind of substances. Like I feel like she was like totally clean and then um, really trying to work her way back to herself. But then I feel like she was in a relationship and it didn't work out. And then there was maybe this other crash, like another hit to her self-esteem is kind of how I'm feeling it, you guys. So I'm gonna listen to some other music here. Let's see if I can look up something else here. Let me just try to um, cast Elliot music. Let me hear something else of yours. I can't, I can't have it on the microphone because I don't wanna get any kind of copyright thing. But I want to see. Um, okay, let's see. Mamas and the Papas. Some of you, some of the viewers criticized me for not looking up information. So here now I'm looking up something. Be happy, <laughs> educating myself by listening to music. That's pretty much all I'm doing here. All right, so let's see the mamas and the papas. And let's see. Oh, California Dreamin'. Oh my gosh, I loved that song. Serious? Oh my gosh. See you guys, I cannot channel their voices. Why? Because it's not my gift. It's hers. It's your gift. She said, yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, thanks. And then she says something about Daisy. I don't know who Daisy is, but she mentions Daisy. So I'm not sure what that means or what that's about, but. Wow, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your energy. I appreciate your honesty and your authenticity. I think it really helps people who've struggled with obesity, with addiction, with how to share their gifts. And I think it's, it's good to hear from the afterlife perspective, the reflection on the human life. You know, it gives, it gives us insight, I think, into ourselves. So thank you for that. I appreciate it very much. Oh, I should ask you about Janice Joplin. What do you think about Janice Joplin? She brought you up in two, at least twice during my conversation with her. Is there a connection? She's great. Talent. A lot of talent there. A lot of talent. She's great. Great. A lot of talent, she says. It's really sad when she died. It was real sad when she died. You know, a lot of, a big loss there. She said a big loss there. Big loss there. She says, us girls got to stick together, you know. Big loss there. Thank you, thank you for, for sharing that. All right, you guys, this is Bridget. It's been my pleasure here at Above Life Channel. I hope that we have been able to inspire your spirit with our conversation with Cass Elliott today in the afterlife. Go ahead and fill in any of the blanks in the comments below that I had questions about during this channeling, especially if you know about her. If you're a mega fan, go ahead and, and share your comments below. That's so much appreciated. And remember, this is your life. This is yours. Right here and right now. It's your life. So live it. Just live it. <laughs> Thanks for watching.